Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again. In this video, we're going to look at a recent presentation concerning California high-speed rail stations in the Central Valley and why these ideas might be a park and ride nightmare. This is a PowerPoint presentation. I'll go through most of it slide by slide. From this chart, you can see schematic design for these stations starts pretty much now and design development ends middle of next year. That makes now the last opportunity to really rip into these ideas, so I'm taking my shot. It's pretty common practice on large projects these days when building multiple structures to come up with a kit of parts in order to ensure that each structure adheres to design philosophy, but each can be adapted to its particular situation. And that's the case with these four stations. Each one is a little different, but they all have the same basic elements. This is the configuration of those elements into a station. All but Fresno adhere to this basic assemblage because Fresno's platforms are ground level and station structure is elevated above them rather than the other way around. General sizing and clearances for the various functional parts. You can see the amount of cars in a train and also platform length will change as service expands beyond the Central Valley. I'm not sure how that's going to work with the platforms. Here's an example of the canopy element as planned at Fresno. Here's the same design, but in white. Hopefully the steampunk bronzed look gets ditched. Let's dig into the individual stations, starting with Merced. Oddly, this view doesn't feature the station location it would be out of frame over here. Merced is a city of about 90,000 residents. The station would be about a third of a mile from the center of Merced's roughly 20 square block downtown area. I'm hoping these numbers jump off the screen at you like they did for me. 3,400 parking spaces for park and ride once phase one is completed. Granted, that will only be 1,200 for Central Valley alone. The transit percentage is high here because the station will host connections to two different intercity rail services and regional bus service since it's a temporary northern end for California high-speed rail. Here's the site plan for Merced. You can see they have two bus depots, one regional and one local. These areas here would be under the viaduct. The white area is the station footprint, but it will function on two vertical levels. I'll show that in a minute. This is what the station location looks like now. Here it is with the station drawing superimposed and parking lots copy pasted in the correct places. Even though the station is only about four blocks from downtown, the station will be surrounded with parking. This about doubles the amount of parking in the area, leaving the local Costco in the dust. Worse yet, small businesses occupy a large percentage of the future parking lot area. Going back to the site map, you can see an asterisk next to most of these parking lots. That means that area could be transit oriented development in the future. However, that won't diminish the need for parking any, so the remaining parking would probably have to become multi-story structures. It should be mentioned that everything along the future California high-speed rail path here is doomed, so all of these get kablooied. No idea what's planned for the space underneath. Maybe more parking. Here's the cross section showing the awkward setup where you enter by going up over the freight right of way and then back down to the station under the viaduct and then back up to the platforms. Going back to the kit slide, you can see Merced has the least free space underneath the platforms and most massive station out of the elevated sites. Not sure why that is. Also not sure, but I think this area is supposed to be street facing shops. Yep, free slot play Saturday nights with your club card down at Merced Casino. I'm a little confused by the foreground because the authority does not own that property. And here's what it looks like now from that vantage point. To cover the rest of the stations, we're going to work our way from north to south. The next one in Madera is 38 miles away as the crow flies and 44 by California high-speed rail. 
It is located between California High Speed Rail and BNSF rights of way, five miles southeast of town. Madera is a city of 66,000, but the station isn't even in the city. It's a little baffling as a choice, almost as confusing as the King's Tulare station, which is also located in the middle of a field. The Madera station is being developed by the San Joaquin Joint Powers Authority. It is significant because it will be the first Central Valley stop reached by California High Speed Rail going south from the Bay Area once that is connected. This is due to the Y that splits the Central Valley segment into North and South at Chowchilla. I haven't seen renders, but the layout appears minimalist with platforms on either side of the tracks and an elevated walkway between. Not sure if there's going to be a station building, but they have room for one and some minor local development. However, the draft environmental impact statement doesn't come out until later this year. Here's the site now. And here it is with the station again. Anticipating mostly park and ride and drop off with 400 parking spaces. That's 3,700 so far if you're counting. Also a bus stop area with room for six buses. That seems intensely optimistic. Looking from higher up with the before view and now with the station in place, I can't imagine too many people outside of the community college students would live out there as it's kind of the middle of nowhere. As we move on to Fresno, it's also worth noting that the Madera station site is only 18 miles from the Fresno station. It seems superfluous to me, but it's getting built, so too late now. Fresno's population is 540,000, making it the fifth largest city in the state. The surrounding metro area has a population of about a million. A view of Fresno and once again leaving the station site out of the shot. The Fresno station is the closest to its accompanying downtown at two blocks distant. Perhaps because of that, the Fresno station's bike walk percentage is expected to be the highest among the Central Valley segment stations. Still, park and ride expected at 30% and ultimately 3,400 parking spaces. We're now up to 7,100. And again, potential transit-oriented development around the station probably won't shrink that any, as that will keep coming from the vast suburban part of Fresno. By the way, I'm interested to see what bicycle parking for 2,600 bikes that's 90% empty looks like. Also, look at that 64 drop-off spaces. That's mid-sized airport level, yet most of that is serviced by a two-lane road shared with buses. That should be interesting. While we're looking at the site plan, here's what that area looks like now and what it will look like with the various facilities. One slight irritant is this 1,000-foot-long elevated walkway that you have to use to access the station because it's elevated above the platforms. I can understand why they did this. If they hadn't, the traffic situation on the Chinatown side of the tracks would have been a complete nightmare with pedestrians crossing the road combined with bus and individual drop-off. But hey, at least you'll get your steps in this way. Here's a hypothetical view from the elevated station looking southeast. Unfortunately, it's going to end up looking more like this. The Fresno station is, in my opinion, the best looking of the bunch, but I wish they ditched the bronze and changed the shape of the canopy so that it doesn't look like it's attached to a giant vacuum cleaner wand or an accordion. The entrance still looks like it's leading into a 15-year-old casino, though. Looking at the site farther out as it currently stands, and then with the station plan in place. The downtown area two blocks from the station site is beat down, but a handful of buildings from the early 20th century have managed to hang in there, and some are rather attractive. The area is also highly walkable, so the bones are there. Chinatown on the southwest side of the station is a disaster. That's both a blessing and a curse. There's a lot of room for redevelopment, but your brand new station is also going to initially be surrounded by scenes like this. Not gonna see curbside oil changes in the renders. Let's go from Fresno, which actually possesses some of the qualities necessary to make this whole idea work, to 30 miles south and Kings Tulare Station outside of Hanford, California, which possesses none. 
I've made no secret of my disdain for this station site. Looking at this picture, you can probably tell why. And looking at this graphic doesn't help matters any. This will likely be the lowest traffic station in the entire California high-speed rail system, and we're still looking at 2,900 parking spaces. That brings us to 10,000 if you lost track. 45% park and ride and 35% drop off, that means 80% of all your supposedly clean traffic congestion easing trips to and from here include a car. I'm just going to leave it at that, but if that doesn't convince you, here's the station site. It's 5% station, 50% surface parking, 45% solar panels or groundwater recharge. Again, most of the area for parking is marked potential transit oriented development, but the need for parking here is never going away because the nearest city, Hanford, is three miles to the west and Visalia, the largest city in the area at 140,000 people, is 10 miles to the east. This station and Bakersfield have the best cross sections. No up and over nonsense. The platforms are raised. The station is underneath. Go into the station and up to the platform. This looks like a county fair pavilion in the 40s. The canopy accordion lends an art deco flair to whatever dismal business is happening around these stairs slash escalators. I'd like 2030 to feel like the future we've been promised, not some idealized version of the 70s, okay? And I'm really sure that a thousand people from the area will just go hang out at a train station plaza for no reason. Give me a break with some of these renders. The canopies do look pretty cool from the inside. If they can alter the outside and retain this effect, I'm on board. A look at the site now to show you how isolated it is. That's Hanford at the bottom. You'd need to be on the International Space Station to get Visalia in the shot. And now with the station in the picture. Well, good riddance to Kings Tulare. We'll move on to the southernmost station in Bakersfield. That's about 75 miles further south, which is the first distance between stations where you'd have an appreciable amount of high-speed travel. Bakersfield City has a population of 400,000. The Kern County Metro contains about 900,000. Here's Bakersfield. If you're not familiar with the place, this pretty much sums up the vibe. Again, for some reason, the station site is just not in the shot. The station is a little more than a mile from this picture on the other side of two freeways slash divided highways slash state routes. Bakersfield has a somewhat unique road layout in this respect. Some might call these strodes, but they're more like aborted freeways where they're grade separated in parts, part strode, and then part just regular surface streets. In the case of State Route 178, it splits into two four-lane one-way streets through the downtown area, and then it's sort of freeway otherwise, really weird. The other one, State Route 204 or Golden State Avenue, fronts the California High-Speed Rail Station. Here's the station layout, here's the site now, and here it is with the station. The dilemma here is that the site will be surrounded on its four sides by the Kern River, freight rail, a four-lane divided highway, and what will essentially be a freeway in State Route 204. The only ingress-egress from the site is one side of the divided highway and an underpass beneath State Route 204. So it's almost like a walled city and quite isolated from the rest of Bakersfield except by car. That is reflected in the anticipated eventual need for 3,400 parking spaces at this site. That's the amount of parking you'd find at a mall. That brings the parking space total for the Central Valley to about 13,400 once Phase 1 is complete. By comparison, LAX, which is the fifth busiest airport in the country, handling more passengers than the entirety of California High-Speed Rail Phase 1 projections, only has 10,000 parking spaces in its terminal area. Again, most of these parking pads are marked potential future transit-oriented development, but considering the factors already mentioned, the place would be much more like a lifestyle center with housing than an urban core. 
We'll add regional bus service to this already odd mixture since the vigorous bus service between Bakersfield and LA will continue for quite a while or possibly forever depending on if phase one of California high speed rail is ever completed. 20 bus bays here with buses coming and going all day and night. Remarkably, they plan to keep most of those open even after phase one is done. Cross section similar to King's Tulare with the simpler circulation. This graphic is a little misleading because the area next to the station on the right side is currently set aside for bus depots. This is the underside of the viaduct just outside the station. Again, it just looks like a mall. Keep in mind your apparent upper middle class lifestyle center tranquility will be punctuated by an extremely busy set of bus depots on the right. And then the entrance plaza view, canopy accordion looking really awkward on top of a building that looks like a place you go to to settle tax disputes. Let's pray they change these designs. I'd like to ride the train, but this is not a space I'm dying to be in. So that does it for my gentle criticism of the California High Speed Rail Central Valley stations. With the exception of Fresno, it looks like these will be isolated from the cities around them by parking, infrastructure, or just the fact that they're not in any of the cities around them. With all this car dependence, it seems like these will increase sprawl, shifting people out of more expensive, compact housing situations near transit and the coast, and into single-family homes with a little land that they can afford since driving to the high-speed rail station and parking won't be an issue. What do you think about all this? Am I overreacting here, or is this a legitimate concern about potential visual and social impacts of the project? Let me know in the comments. As always, more videos to come. Look for an examination of the Federal Railroad Administration Northern New England High-Speed Rail Corridor next. After that, more of your favorite channel series. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you on that big beautiful freeway.